Wisconsin's Republican-controlled legislature passed a series of bills late Wednesday night that would limit the powers of incoming Democratic Governor Tony Evers and other newly elected Democratic officials. The measures would give more power to the state legislature. They would also limit early voting, a process which tends to favor Democrats. Another measure would make it difficult for Democrats to remove Wisconsin from a lawsuit that is attempting to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Evers and Attorney General Josh Call reacted on this on reacted to this on Thursday. I view this what was passed as as a frankly a hot mess, and together all of it is uh, I think a dangerous precedent. It's no accident that this bill was only released on a Friday afternoon, uh, and that this has moved through the legislative process as quickly as possible. Evers has also said he would consider challenging the bills in court if outgoing Republican Governor Scott Walker signs them. Mary Spacuza has covered the story for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and she joins me now. Thanks so much for joining us, Mary. Let's start with the bills themselves. How exactly would these measures impact Governor-elect Evers? So um, they released 141 pages of legislation on Friday, and um, I think we might be finding out more about the bills as uh, we get some uh, more information from um, some of the legislative offices. But basically, one of the things that they do, um, and these are like broad sweeping bills with a bunch of different uh, provisions in them, but one of the things that they do is limit um, the ability to withdraw from this lawsuit over the Affordable Care Act. Um, the Republican legislature wants to stay in that lawsuit. It was a campaign promise of both Tony Evers and Josh Call to get out of it. And this would make it harder for them to do that. It would also make it harder for Tony Evers to um, reshape this job, this big jobs agency here um, known as WEDIC that's had a lot of problems. He wants to um, pick a new leader, reshape the board. Republicans uh, who control the legislature are trying to limit his ability to do that. Um, it also limited early voting to just two weeks rather than it goes up to um, six weeks here. So mm -hmm. especially in places like Milwaukee and Madison, that tends to favor Democratic voters. Well, the bills also seek to limit the power of incoming Democratic Attorney General Josh Call. As you mentioned, how exactly would his job be impacted? So um, there are provisions to cut the number of positions that he has in a pretty key office where he would be losing staff. Um, it would make it so it would be easier for Republican lawmakers to hire their own attorneys um, to represent them rather than having typically the attorney general would represent the legislature um, in lawsuits. This way they could really shop for their own attorneys. So that does raise questions not only about Josh Call's power, but about taxpayer money and what kind of money is going to be spent on outside lawyers versus somebody who's actually getting paid to do the job. So those are a couple of the big ways that it would limit him. And we're still finding out it looks like it would limit his ability to um, enforce some environmental rules and things like that. Um, but uh, those are some of the, the big ticket items. Well, Republican Assembly Speaker Robin Voss reacted to Evers' threats to pursue litigation and to increased criticism, and here's a bit of what he said. Well, we all know that we have three equal branches, um, so of course they have the right to go to court. Um, we've already vetted these with um, legal experts that we believe have shown that they are clearly constitutional, so they have every right to go to court. Um, I'll be anxious to see what the results are, but I'm very confident that these are constitutional. We don't want to usurp his power. That's never been our goal. Our goal is just to guarantee that we have an opportunity to sit at the table, negotiate, and do it fairly. So Voss argues that these bills are constitutional. What do we know, Mary? Is that true? Um, I think it depends on who you ask. I talked to a very high-powered Democratic attorney who wouldn't say um, definitively that he plans to sue. I think people want to wait to see what Governor Walker actually signs into law. Mm -hmm. But when I asked him if they were constitutional, he said, look, all you got to do is read the Constitution. So basically, he feels no. Um, Attorney General Eric Holder has said they're not constitutional. Our former governor, Jim Doyle, who was in office for eight years, says they're not constitutional. So mm -hmm. I think Democrats and, and Republicans Republicans are not going to agree on that one, and it might be up to the courts to decide because I do think Democrats will sue. Well, based on your reporting, is Voss accurately portraying the Republicans' goals by saying that they don't want to usurp Evers' power, that they just want an opportunity to sit at the table? 
So um, it's interesting to note that when um, Republicans really swept into power um, eight years ago, when Governor Walker took uh, one, when um, re Republicans took control of both houses, um, they actually gave Governor Walker more power at that time. And now they're scaling back. Voss said this wasn't about who was in office, but I think it is um, hard to imagine that he would be he would be promoting these measures if Governor Walker had won re-election instead of losing to Tony Evers. And what about Governor Walker? Do we know where he stands on all this? We don't. Um, he hinted earlier this week that um, he did not voice opposition to the measures. He said, look, law, like lawmakers are in office. I'm in office. Um, they're in office until January. So he did not signal any intention to veto these bills. Um, he did not say outright that he would sign them. And um, actually, interestingly, the Wisconsin governor has very powerful veto powers. And um, a lot of these measures he could partially veto, where he could strike out line by line or even word by word to really rewrite what passed. So it might be that he doesn't veto them or doesn't pass them, but kind of rewrites them. Well, if Walker signs these bills and Evers challenges them in court, as he has said he will, do we know, is there any indication that one side might have an advantage based on the makeup of Wisconsin's state Supreme Court? Sure. So um, it's, it's very likely that, like, the early voting limits, for example, um, would be challenged in federal court mm -hmm. um, by a group like One Wisconsin Now, which is a liberal watchdog kind of muckraking group that sued over early voting limits um, recently in recent years and actually won that lawsuit. Um, so I think that it's likely that some of these might be in federal court. But yes, the Wisconsin Supreme Court certainly has a conservative majority. And so if they do go to that court, I think that would favor conservatives. All right. We'll certainly be paying close attention. Mary Spacuza. Mary, thanks very much for your insight. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me.